Hello. Okay. Um, as you can see from the title here, just a quick video um, on, well, let's say some of the things that I wish I knew when I started Locksport or just certain little bits and bobs that even you might not know now if you've been doing it a while, but just might be a little bit of help to you or you might think, ah, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, just small little bits and bobs that'll help you make your life a little bit easier and maybe answer some questions that we see a lot from people that are just starting out. A um, little list here, so I'll just start off. Um, locks, that is uh, probably the number one question that we see. Uh, where can I get cheap or free locks from um, to practice on without spending loads of money on them, you know? Uh, the answer is, for me, at least, a locksmith. Go find your local locksmith just pop in and all you can do is ask and they can say no, they can say yes, it doesn't matter, move on to the next one if they say no, so thank you. <laughs> um, a lot, there is a lot of locksmiths out there that are sort of old school and they see this new fan dangle lock sport thing as a, a threat to them. They think, oh, somebody's out there and they're not a locksmith, but yet they're better than me at picking locks and they don't like it. Um, they might not obviously use some locks, However, I worked in a locksmith. I had somebody come in and ask me that. I had a bucket full of locks to give them. So it's always worth an ask. You may uh, come out on top with that one. Um, PVC door and window specialists as well. They've, they've probably got a bunch that you can go and take out of old doors and things like that that they've got around. But you must always ask. Never just take something. Of course, that's theft. <laughs> um, next, I've got here... From the pound shop, I managed to find one of them claw grabbers, yeah? It was absolutely rubbish for what you bought it for. However, this tube, we chop a piece off, you guessed it. Absolutely spot on for a plug follower, because we don't always have that set that we use to take locks apart and things like that. But there are things lying around that you can utilize that just happen to be the right size and um, sharpie pens and things like that as well are also you can use those on the uh, subject of that i would recommend finding yourself this kit here almost everyone's got it loads of people know what it is um i keep in here that has followers in it um front loaded thing as well and things hold your core it also comes in here which is very important to me which i found out quickly before I had that set in that set comes this pair of tweezers now on there you can see that says stainless steel non magnetic drive yourself insane if you're trying to use tweezers that are magnetic and you won't let go of things like that so that's quite important like I say that comes in that blue set there if you can find that then that's the one to get I've had that set for a long time and I always use it it's the number one go-to set for disassembling locks and it's kind of cheap as well so that's good um this lock here this is a good tip as well if you're just starting out and you want to learn how to pick a certain type of pin that you've never picked before you've moved on from the standard pins now you want to try maybe spools or serrated and you see that you've got one of these locks here with the anti-snap break that section off and that leaves you then with a basically a two or three pin lock, depending on what the lock is and where the break point is. So what you can do with that is you can pin that up one standard pin and then the pin that you're trying to learn. So then you can pick this lock then, press your standard pin because you know exactly where it is and then pay close attention to how it feels then to pick that one solidarity, uh, that, that one pin that's in there that you're trying to learn It'll give you so you exactly how it's supposed to feel when you pick it. And when, once you've done that, then obviously you can try and pick the other remaining side with the more pins in it and then try the full lock. It's just sort of like a, your own progressive sort of thing. Um, that's what I did anyway. Um, as far as picking locks, um, vices, people ask about vices. I would tell you to stay away from the suction vices. Absolutely rubbish. They work maybe for about the first 
couple of weeks and then they no longer stick to anything and then you're just left with a clunky paperweight really <laughs> it's, it's it's a load of rubbish um what i will recommend straight away is one of these stanley vices they're about 27 quid and you can adjust this here and angle it and turn it all types of ways that you like comes with rubber um protectors in there as well if you want them i don't personally prefer them because i like to do a bit of filing and, and bench work with this thing clamps right onto your desk there quite a lot of space there for a larger desk as well if you want it i'm on the edge of my kitchen unit here which is pretty thin but that that's fine as well turn that on there and um you can see that some people have these uh cylinder holders as well um they're quite expensive actually for what they are it's just plate steel thing what I would recommend, and the best option to simulate what you're trying to simulate would be just put it in a lock. If you can find a, a Euro case, this is one I've had for years now. I just chuck a lock into that, and then there's nothing more simulating of a lock than for it to actually be in a lock case and for you to turn it and get that bolt open. It's, it's more satisfying to see something open once you've picked the lock for sure. And you can just chuck that straight, straight in your vise, and you're good to go. Gives you the right angle, everything like that, and like I say, the satisfaction of opening the lock. Definitely the best way. Um, picks we could talk about. Picks. Um, I keep my picks in this. This is a makeup brush holder. You can get very cheap, a couple of quid, and it makes a perfect little thing on my desk to just pick and grab my picks out of. Nice and easy. That's useful to know. I didn't know about didn't know about those things for a good long time. Um, secondary to picks, a tip here for somebody just starting out if you don't know it. Almost just as important as your picks is your wrenches. So having a big selection of different wrenches is very important. If you can't tension the lock right, regardless of having the right pick, you're not going to get the lock open. It might bind up or something like that. It's very important to have lots and lots of tension wrenches and lots of options. So when you get a kit and it comes with two wrenches, that's not going to be enough to get you through you can get through a lot of locks with them but bend up bits of steel and wire i think one of these here literally just a bit of wire i've had i just bent it up like that i've used this one to pick a bannum the other day because i have the bottom of the keyway thing like that it's it's very important to have a lot of wrenches is what i'm saying um people ask about dimple locks and um, once they've done a bit of a cylinder picking they want to try and move on to dimple locks so i think it's the next more difficult thing to do it's it's a bit of a myth that dimple locks are more difficult than cylinder locks normal um normal cylinder locks dimple locks in my mind are easier providing you have the right picks um a dimple lock keyway that's it's picked at the moment um but a dimple lock keyway, of course, it's not going to let me straighten that out. A dimple lock keyway is much wider than a normal keyway. We have more room to move around in there. And when we're picking, we can move onto our pin and then rotate and work. Where if we're doing a normal pin tumbler, when we're on the pin, we can slip off forwards and backwards. It's harder to slip off a pin when you're doing a dimple lock depending on the keyway, of course, and, and how difficult the lock is. Um, as far as difficult locks, this is a Keyways. I think I picked this up for about £2.50 at one of the shows. Um, you can get these online. They're a bit more expensive than £2.50, but they are by far a cheap, good dimple cylinder to start practicing on. Um, no spools in it as it comes, just standard pins. From that, if you we're confident picking that then i would then it sounds a bit odd but suggest going ah, and expensive so if you can find one from somebody it would be 
better, but this cylinder in here is a multi-lock garrison. Seen loads of them on my channel, you know about those. Um, this, it may have seven pins in it. I think this one actually only has six because of the space, but typically we'll have seven pins in it. But this is a quality lock and it will pick in the way that a lock should pick. Cheap locks, they'll do something different and won't give you a true feeling of how it is to pick a, a proper lock. This lock here, it's easy to pick. It has spools in it, so it'll teach you about that as well. And it'll give you a great sense of accomplishment if you manage to pick that open. And like I said, it's not a difficult lock to pick at all. Multi-lock garrison. Other multi-locks, yes, very hard to pick. This one here, garrison and multi-lock integrator is basically the same lock as well, only the keyway is a little bit more difficult maybe. Um, See if you can get your hands on one of them if you're trying to get further into your dimple picking. Uh, as far as what to pick with, I will always now recommend this set here. This is the Hook brand, as you can see on the top. Comes in a nice semi-hard case. Lots of different colors in there. And compared to other brands that are similar to this, you actually get equal amounts of left and right handedness with these picks so if we see here um if i get two red picks out these are two identical picks one left one right in the length of them they are the same and then if i was to get the blue ones again this is one left and one right but compared to the red one, it's hard to see, but the red one is a, is a little bit longer and it does make a difference to have that change. One a little bit longer and one shorter. You will switch between the two depending on the warding of the lock. You've got uh, curved flags in here as well. Comes with those left and right. And um, these come straight out of the packet, ready to pick. You don't need to do any modifications, filing or, or rounding of the shafts, they're already round for you, ready to go. You pick multi-locks with these straight out of the packet, no problem. A uh, couple of wrenches come in there as well. So I recommend those. Cheap, about again, about 23 pounds, you can find them cheapest maybe, from, you know, Banggood or, or wherever it is that's selling those at the moment. Amazon do sell them, but I think they're a bit inflated price. Um, here, next on the list, I have a steel cable tie. You can buy these in packs of 10, fairly cheap. As it is straight out of the packet, we can decode locks with this. Um, just as an example, a four wheel coded lock that will slide in there nicely, loads of room to feel. It's a nice skinny wire, but stout enough not to kink and bend on you for decoding these locks. Um, I even went as far as cutting a key out on one and that worked absolutely fine as well. I was just messing around, kind of fun. But uh, brilliant things to have in your bag if you're out as a locksmith or in your drawer just to keep these. You can cut them up, change them around, do whatever you like with them. Um, another shim that you could use is also from a security tag on a product you know, the little white sticky tag if you cut the back of them open and you can take out the little strips of metal that are in there they're also good for shimming cylinders as well if you're di uh, disassembling them that's good um if you are disassembling locks you're going to end up with a load of pins and you might not always want to put them back into locks or you might want to repurpose them so you need to store them in whilst you're thinking about what to put them in. Um, I had a big mess of pots <laughs> until now. Oh, Jason gets a plug there as well, apparently. Um, this is a pillbox. We pop that open and you can see we've got a nice selection of pins in there. Security key pins, security driver pins, a bunch of different springs in there as well. Fantastic little box. And I, I was looking for that. I found that in a shop and uh, I didn't know where to get it from again, but I was able to find these ones, basically the same. Comes in a packet of two. You can even choose the colors you want. That's that's uh, 
exactly the same as what I just showed you there. But I'm sure you can look for that on eBay or something and you will be able to find that pack too. They're really handy, they are, and uh, they organize your pins and stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and that's about it really, pinning mats. As far as pinning mats goes, um, you can spend a bit of money on this. It's probably like 30 quid for this big sparrows pinning mat. You saw, you saw in this kit here as well, I kept the other little sparrows ones. That's really handy when you're out and about. If you just want to do on a, on a desk in a hotel or something like that, you don't want to take your big mat. You've got that little one there, that's good. If you're in a complete pinch, you can take a piece of cardboard, fold it up like this, drop that down. You've got a, a thing to put your pins and springs in without them sliding all over your table. And uh, that's about it for this one. Um, if you're doing your lock support, I suppose I've got one here. Camera tripod. This is a dial indicator stand, magnetic. So I've got a big lock stuck on the bottom. And I can put that in any way that I want. And sort of fabric cobbled onto the top of that is a little phone stand thing there that the phone just sits in and I can be hands-free. And I can move that around anywhere that I want. Because that's magnetic, I can just stick it to anything as well. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, if you have any more ideas or things that might be useful for another video on these tips like this, uh, let me know. I'll make a list and uh, maybe make another video as well, maybe a bit more advanced once you've got all this gear and some extra tips as well once you're a bit further along. Uh, that's it. I hope any of this helped somebody at least. One person found one thing in here useful, then that's the point of the video. Um, it was a bit all over the place really, but I just I saw all these things in front of me and I thought, oh, these are not that obvious to some people. So make a quick video. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.